Hi, I'm Judy Shaw. I'm on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange along with Matt Kobach. And joining us today is astronaut Scott Kelly. Scott, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. So, not only are you an astronaut, but now you're an author. You just released your book, Infinite Wonder, an astronaut's photographs from a year in space. Tell us about your book. Well, this book, I, I have uh, four that are currently published. The, uh, four? Yeah, the first one was in an autobiography. Okay. Uh, the second one was a kid's book. Kid's uh, book? For like little kids. Love that. <laughs> and I had a young reader version of my autobiography uh, come out at the same time as this book, Infinite Wonder. The book, Infinite Wonder, is a uh, coffee table book with uh, yes. photographs. Mm -hmm. It's got some words in it, but it's mostly... Uh, mostly pictures from my year on the International Space Station. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of broken into three categories. Uh, you know, the first section is about, you know, trying to show in pictures what we do on the space station. The, the middle part is called uh, our natural world. So it's things you see out the window that you can kind of recognize what you're looking at. And the last part are these uh, abstract art uh, type photos that I took of the planet with a very long lens up close, something that you might uh, like to hang on your wall. Oh. Did, did you take all these photos? I took uh, most of the photos in the book. There are some yeah. that I'm in the photos, so I didn't take okay. those. You, know, you ever heard of a selfie? Could have been how you kept hey, all I got some space selfies. Yeah. Space <laughs> selfies, can't beat yeah. those. I so, space selfies. Astronaut, author, uh. photographer. Yes. Pretty, you're pretty established. <laughs> so you spent a year on the International Space Station. Besides being a photographer, what else were you doing up there? Well, um, <laughs> let me see. You're the uh, scientist. Mm -hmm. You're the engineer. You're the operator of the hardware. You're the plumber. You're the IT person. <laughs> you're the electrician. You're the doctor. You're, you're everything. the dentist. <laughs> I sold you short when I said astronaut, I author, know. photographer, didn't I? You can't call a repairman, so you're like everything. Wow. So one question I have for you. There's been a kind of, not renaissance, but all this uh, interest in space tourism. So we've got several CEOs, several high name companies that are talking about doing it. So one, I want to know what you think about it. But two, I've heard that going to space changes your perspective. Have you found that to be the case? Do you think people would actually benefit from that perspective? Yeah. So I think uh, space tourism is great. I think it's great that we have companies that are, in some cases, investing their own money into uh, providing uh, the general public eventually with uh, you know less expensive access to space. Um, you know, SpaceX has a really good capability to resupply the International Space Station. So you know, I think it's just the natural progression of. Um, the technology of, of flying to space and eventually you'll have companies doing this for uh, tourism reasons and profit um, and then you know it'd be great to get all the people of our planet to look and see what an incredible place we have to see it from that perspective because it does change I think who you are the longer time you spend in space you get to look out at Earth you, you know you see how fragile the atmosphere is how thin it looks how certain parts of the planet, despite being incredibly beautiful, and there's always come with pollution. Um, you see, you know, countries, um, actually you really don't see countries, you see continents without political borders. So it looks like all the people oh, yeah. on the planet are kind of in this thing called humanity together. And being an astronaut, you know, my, you know, my, one of my big jobs was being a problem solver in space, you know, really challenging environment and what I learned is you know you don't solve problems by yourself you solve them as part of a team so I think that you know perspective on humanity the environment teamwork is something we can all benefit. yeah no, that's great that's great so the president proposed Space Force as a new branch of the military do you think that's something that's needed um, well I was in the Makes US sense. Navy mm -hmm. and uh, the U.S. Air Force has always been our kind of our rival, mm -hmm. it's, uh, a uh, friendly <laughs> rivalry. They do a great job, and uh, to take our largest bureaucracy in, in our government and add a, uh, a significantly uh, larger bureaucracy, and, you know, to make that bureaucracy <laughs> larger, to get uh, a, some kind of new capability. I'm not, I'm not actually sure we like 
thought about this enough and mm -hmm. investigated whether the capability we currently have is not sufficient and we need to create a new branch of the armed forces to get some undetermined new capability. Mm -hmm. Now, having said all this, if they have lightsabers, I'm all in. <laughs> in your head? I'm in. It does lightsabers. go with the name. I love it. Lightsabers and Space Force seems to go well. All right, I want to get you on the record here, okay? Oh, yeah. What year will we have a person on Mars? I have no idea. Give a guess. If you had to guess. So. Is it, is it imminent? NASA has is a it target. Gonna, is it going to happen? It will happen. Okay, it will happen. But Give me I don't a know How about a decade? How about a decade? What decade? Yeah, what if I had to pick a decade. Yeah. Definitely, I don't think the next one. Right, okay, so now, so now it's 20, so 30s, uh, maybe? I don't know. Well, that's what you NASA's know, thinking, right? And going to Mars is, it's not, and my brother says this, I gotta give him credit for it. It's not about rocket science. Yeah. It's about political science. Yeah, really? Why, why is that? It's that. Because we, you know, we're, we're pretty smart and flying in space, and we got a lot of stuff figured out. I mean, there's still a few technical things, I think, that need to be ironed out, but... You know, for the most part, it's a it's a, a funding issue, a priority issue, a political issue of do we want to, you know, uh, it's going to be expensive. Do we want to spend that kind of money to go to Mars? I personally uh, think we could get there where that is, uh, you know, a priority for our limited resources. But we do have other priorities. So mm -hmm. it's... Uh, you know, so I think it'll a, happen someday. It's more of a yeah. priority issue than it is a technological issue. Correct. I, I, that's what I mean. So, final question. Tell us about your path to becoming an astronaut. Were you a little boy who stared up the sky and said, I want to be an astronaut looking at space? I was a little boy that stared out the window of the classroom wondering <laughs> what was going on outside yeah. because I could not pay attention to my teachers. And uh, I'm very like this not a typical uh, former student that becomes an astronaut because I wasn't a good student growing up. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I found inspiration uh, when I was in college mm -hmm. from a book of all things, which was The Right Stuff, the right stuff. that I decided, you know, I'm going to try to do this. But it's going to take me, you know, changing the significant thing about myself, and that is, you know, becoming a, a learner and a better student and an engineer and military pilot, so, um, yeah, so I was not one of those kids that <laughs> said, I am going to do this in time. It sounds the almost like you found your calling. <laughs> I did. And, and you're, while you're in school. Yes, so. amazing. Well, thank amazing. you so much. Yes, right. this is so wonderful. Thanks for thank having me. You. Yeah. We'll make sure to get the book and put it on our coffee table. Thank you. <laughs>